My first time out here is already some trouble. But right after I said it, pow. Third Forrest was shot and killed in an attempted carjacking in northwest Atlanta last night. And Not a shame to show body. You know, I mean, I got a healthy body. I'm 23 years old. Uh, I think I want to do something different. I want to blow their mind, you know? I want to show them what much of is all about, you know? One of boxing's biggest stars has died. Hector Macho Camacho has taken off life support today. Gatti was found dead today in an apartment in Brazil. Gatti was on a second honeymoon with his wife and 10 month old baby. He was discovered with blood stains on his neck and the back of his head. Few details are being released, but foul play is suspected. Sport of boxing is a perfect metaphor for life. You win some, you lose some. And whether you're running towards a problem or away from one, there will always come a time where you have to stand your ground and fight. Boxer shot and killed in West Baltimore. 24 years old, he's known as Kelly and he planned to turn pro. Champ Hernan Forrest was shot and killed. Gotti was found dead today in an apartment in Brazil. Hector Macho Camacho was taken off life support today. Growing up in harsh urban neighborhoods, you see but few opportunities to move beyond this environment. And most of the time, these choices are some type of entertainer or playing in some sort of sport. 27-year-old Isaiah Olabemi, he was a national Golden Gloves winner and had aspirations of turning pro. He was also a father and dedicated to his craft inside the ring. Charges in the shooting death of a well-known amateur boxer. Isaiah Olubemi was gunned down near his home in Odenton as WJZ is on your corner in Anne Arundel County tonight. Our Christina Mendez spoke with the owner of that gym where the victim trained. And Christina, what are you learning about who Isaiah Olubemi was? Olubemi had just began his boxing career in recent years and the gym owner that I spoke with says he quickly rose through the ranks and this killing has really left his family, friends, and of course those who looked up to him just devastated about this loss. Isaiah Olubemi reads above the ring where the 27-year-old began his amateur boxing career three years ago. And it was a match made in heaven. From that first day he walked in, he was here just about every day. Gym owner Kristen Jetter says his dedication for the sport was inspiring and infectious. Feel like a champ, bro. Yeah, like a champ, bro. Most recently winning a national championship title. I think Coach Crawford is devastated. Um, in 40 years, this was his first national Golden Gloves champion. Making news of his murder late Monday night all that more painful. Boxing is usually an outlet to get away from this. So when we see a boxer be targeted the way that he was, 
it, it's, a, it's just shocking. Anne Arundel County Police say Olubemi was shot near Meadow Mist Way in Odenton. 36-year-old Nicholas Sheru is now facing charges for first and second degree murder. This is targeted, not a random act. Uh, numerous residents reported hearing uh, multiple gunshots. In the Through the victim's brother, WJZ is learning the suspect was Olubemi's neighbor. Leading up to this incident, the family member says Jeru has been threatening at least twice before with a firearm and police came to investigate. The court records show no earlier arrests were made. Uh, you know, got the dub done. Right. While Jetter says Olubemi was eyeing the idea of entering the professional ring by the end of this year, his legacy, she says, will now live on by those who looked up to him. Isaiah Olubemi was gunned down by his neighbor in an ongoing dispute between the two. But was it envy, jealousy, or maybe even fear that drove Olubemi's neighbor to take his life? It is a well-known fact that boxers carry a certain bravado and aura about them, and this can very well intimidate other men. But no matter what the reason was, this was a senseless shooting of a father and a fighter. He wanted to put this gem on the mat. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to get his gem a name, but you know, there's other people in here that's gonna fill his shoes, for sure. We want to make sure that he lived through us. He was lying on the ground. Uh, he, unfortunately, he died from his injuries later after being transported to a hospital. He was going to work and coming to the gym, taking care of his child. He deserved that. When you lose a loved one, it feels like a piece of you has disappeared with them. And many people speak of how when faced with death, your life flashes before your eyes. But no one speaks of the fact that the loved ones left behind to grieve, their lives flash before their eyes as well. All of the memories of the person compiling into one big database of hurt and despair. about the deaths of Alexis Arguello and Arturo Gotti, boxer Vernon Forrest told a friend to watch out because he said these things happen in threes. Forrest obviously figured another famous boxer was due to die, but there was no way he could have imagined it might be him. Vernon Forrest was born February 12th, 1971 in Augusta, Georgia. Vernon Forrest was an American professional boxer who competed from 1992 to 2008. He held multiple world championships in two weight classes, including the WBC, the IBF, the Ring Magazine, and the lineal welterweight between 2002 and 2003, and the WBC super welterweight twice between 2007 and 2009. Vernon Forrest was a true humanitarian. He spent time coaching the youth and acting as a role model in his godson's life. He also founded group homes for the mentally disabled and took them into his home on holidays and treated them as family. The suspect's car was captured by security cameras pulling up to the pump shortly after 11 p.m. When Vernon Forrest pulled up a few minutes later in his supercharged Jaguar with Florida plates and his godson in tow, an out-of-towner who'd probably not fight back but that was a far cry from who Vernon Forrest really was. Now, Vernon walking down the street, somebody snatched his hat and ran. Vernon chased that person off through the street. It's just a hat. That's the type of person that is. That whatever you do to him, he gonna get you. guy staying over Vernon. He says, that's why I got you, nigga. And he and he said what? That's why I got you, nigga. Upon robbing Vernon Forrest, the suspect turns to flee, taking Vernon Forrest's watch and his championship ring. Vernon Forrest then goes on a hot foot pursuit after the suspect with his legally registered gun in hand. And what happens after that? is nothing less than traumatic.
Motherfuckers think they can just take from you. And he says, oh, you robbing me? And that's when I see Vernon pull out a gun. My first time out here is already some trouble. But right after I say that, pow. Vernon Forrest was shot and killed in an attempted carjacking in northwest Atlanta last night. Atlanta police say Forrest was at a gas station putting air in the tires of his Jaguar around 11 p.m. last night when a car pulled up and at least two men jumped out and tried to steal Forrest's vehicle. The boxer had a gun and gave chase. Gunfire was exchanged. Police say Forrest was shot seven or eight times by two semi-automatic weapons. His biggest fights came in two title bouts against Sugar Shane Mosley in 2002, both of which Forrest won. The guy was also an Olympian. He was scheduled to fight again on August 1st. Here's, here's ESPN.com boxing writer Dan Rayfield with more on Vernon Forrest. Vernon Forrest was never the biggest superstar in boxing, but Vernon Forrest for many years was one of the best fighters in the sport. Really one of the top guys on the pound for pound list. Really only held back because of injuries. He's a guy who beat a prime, and I mean prime, Shane Mosley two times, uh, and did it relatively easily, um, and defended his title, won four different world titles, was a United States Olympian, had a lot of accomplishment as a fighter. Not the most well-known guy, not the most popular fighter, but a really fine, top-level quality boxer who's going to be missed. Vernon Forrest, 38 years old, a tragic month in boxing. Forrest, Arturo Gatti, and Alexis Arguello all killed in the last 30 days. There's no doubt that Vernon Forrest was one of the best fighters of his era. But Vernon Forrest was much more than that. He was flat out a good-hearted human being. So what made Vernon Forrest chase after his robbers after they went to flee? Was it embarrassment? Was it pure anger? Or was it pride? But it wasn't pride that killed Vernon Forrest. It was a cowardly gunman that would rather take what another man worked for than get it on his own. And though Vernon Forrest chased down his attackers, he still saw it fit in his mind to turn away from the situation. And as he turned his back, he was shot in it seven times. Uh, Destin Child Incorporated is a therapeutic group home. We house people with mental disabilities, uh, give them uh, opportunity to uh, be integrated in the, back into society. Most of them come to us on, unable to talk, um, some of them are unverbal. Um, our goal and our job is to make sure that they're not institutionalized anymore, that they're able to uh, be with everyone else and as we call society. In 2024, there are more special needs people than ever before. In 2009, when Vernon Forrest died, he left behind a legacy. And although Vernon Forrest was an Olympian and a five-time champion, I would say his greatest accomplishments was outside of the ring. Vernon Forrest will be forever remembered as a humanitarian and as a great fighter. They say boxing is a poor man's sport, and I'm inclined to agree, but it acts as escapism from the harsh realities of the inner cities like Baltimore, where the murder rate is high and the opportunities are low. Has this gym saved lives? Saved mine. You know, a lot of kids, they're going through a lot of trauma at home. And when they get here, they got people that's trying to help them achieve the best out of them. More than 20 years, Ford has been a father figure, a mentor, and a coach to countless children at Baltimore's Upton Boxing Center. We get like 80 to 100 kids come in. A day. A day. His life was the inspiration behind the boxing trainer Dennis Cuddy Wise on the HBO crime drama, The Wire. But the message is sometimes drowned out by the noise. Sadly, through the years, Ford and his fellow coach Kenny Ellis have lost several rising stars. Ronald Gibbs, he was stabbed in his heart. We have Diddy up here in the middle, he was shot in his head. And Andre was shot, he survived. Ford knows the pain all too well. His son, Kadir, was shot to death when he was 24. And Boxing is a tough sport. It takes hard work, dedication, blood, sweat, and tears, and many sacrifices. But to those that feel trapped in this cruel environment, those sacrifices are well worth it. In boxing, 
Having a long reach is an attribute that all boxers wish that they had. But the streets have an even longer reach, always wanting to snatch you back into a life of poverty, death, and imprisonment. Boxer shot and killed in West Baltimore this morning. City police are looking for the person responsible. This happened early Wednesday on Pennsylvania Avenue in West Baltimore. Police believe Montel Pridget's death stems from some kind of a fight that he'd been having. He is 24 years old. He was known as Telly, and he planned to turn pro. He had been training at Upton Boxing Center. Telly don't bother nobody. You know, he mind his business. You know, nobody don't bother him. He don't bother them. But you know, for that to happen, and so many people know him. Yeah, you've heard the of the newly crowned IBF lightweight junior champion, Gervonta Tank Davis. He's also out of Upton Boxing Center, and he had been helping Pridget work with his career. The violent death of fighters like Montel Pridget happens all but too often. And in neighborhoods like these, a person in fear will shoot faster than a so-called tough guy. In short, if they can't beat you in a fistfight, they'll resort to a gunfight. The only words that could describe his character are his own. I, I got a lot of lady fans, and people compliment me about my body, about my looks, about my teeth, you know, about the way I am. I only saw what much of what it's all about, you know? We in a fight, we in war, you trying to hurt me. If I grab you by the neck and you let me do it, I'm gonna keep doing it every night. I Hector Macho Camacho wasn't the cleanest fighter, and he never claimed to be. But he was one of boxing's most charismatic and flamboyant, which is a great marketing tool in the sport of boxing. Hector Luis Camacho Matias, commonly known by his nickname, Macho Camacho, was a Puerto Rican professional boxer and entertainer. Known for his quickness in the ring and flamboyant style, Camacho competed professionally from 1980 to 2010 and was a world champion in three weight classes. Hector Camacho, who was 50 when he died, left Puerto Rico as a child and moved to New York. He went on to win super lightweight, lightweight and junior welterweight titles in the 1980s and fought high profile bouts against Felix Trinidad, Julio Cesar Chavez and Sugar Ray Leonard. He had a career record of 79, six and three and was a showman in the ring, chanting it's macho time before fights, wearing jewelry, he battled controlled substance and alcohol problems throughout his life and had frequent run-ins with the police. And the report that one of boxing's biggest stars has died, Hector Macho Camacho has taken off life support today. The former lightweight champion was shot in the face while sitting in a car outside a bar in Puerto Rico earlier this week. Camacho was 50 years old. He boxed for 30 years and was known as much for his flamboyance as his quick hands and feet. When Hector was shot, police found an unopened package of narcotics in the car and nine unopened packages on his friend who was also shot and killed. So did Hector Camacho's past catch up with him? Was living a life of crime over the years the reason why he met his violent end? If I'm too complicated for the people, just tune in, keep watching me. What can I tell you? It's Macho time. Hector Macho! For the people in this surveillance video, police say they're persons of interest 
in the shooting death of an Atlanta boxer. Within the past hour, the man's mother spoke to Channel 2's Tom Regan about her son's dreams and his ambitions. And Tom, he just wanted to be a top fighter and he wanted to be a role model to children. He did, Javita. Michael Robinson's mom just got back from Tennessee where a packed memorial service was held for her son this past weekend. She wanted to share with us some of the achievements of his boxing career and his dedication to helping to keep young kids out of trouble. That's his heavyweight belt that he won from that first knockout in 2009. Kathy Turley told me her son Michael dreamed of one day becoming a boxing champion. He won two amateur belts and had just turned pro. After walking to a convenience store the night of January 23rd to grab a snack, he was robbed and shot to death on his way home to his apartment on Harwell Road. We only had one shot, one bullet to the stomach, and that's it. They really didn't know who this person was. Kathy told me Michael was a loving son and father who always put faith at the center of his life, right next to boxing. He read his Bible every day, he took his Bible with him when he went to boxing matches. He prayed with everybody with his Bible before he even boxed. She says her 30-year-old son also was a role model to young boxers. His dedication was to keep the kids off the street. He even sponsors um, a young girl in Africa and um, he was trying to get everybody else on board with sponsoring a child. Police released this surveillance video saying these young men seen outside a nearby convenience store and an apartment complex are persons of interest that they want to identify and question. The victim's mom has a message for those involved in her son's murder. Maybe it was a mistake, you just wanted to rob him, but I, I truly feel and want you to come forward. I need justice for my son to make peace. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. And what I think that means is that you'll do anything to get it. Even if that means committing a multitude of sins, going against your moral code, or turning your back on a loved one. Arturo Gotti was a Canadian professional boxer who competed from 1991 to 2007, a world champion in two weight classes. Gotti held the IBF junior lightweight title from 1995 to 1998 and the WBC super lightweight title from 2004 to 2005. Arturo Gotti has fought big names like Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Oscar De La Hoya. But his most notable fights was his trilogy against Mickey Ward, where this solidified the warrior's heart inside of Arturo Thunder Gotti. Gotti was found dead today in an apartment in Brazil. Gotti was on a second honeymoon with his wife and 10-month-old baby. He was discovered with blood stains on his neck and the back of his head. Few details are being released, but foul play is suspected. In 2006, Arturo Gotti met Amanda Rodriguez while out walking his dog. And then one month later, after his fight with Alfonso Gomez, the couple got married. And then one year after that, they had a child together. But during this time, Arturo Gotti would suffer from alcohol abuse as well as narcotic use. And according to Amanda Rodriguez, Gotti was a completely different person when under the influence. They fought and argued, to the point of them receiving a court order to separate. Just days after this court order, they rekindled their relationship. And in May of 2009, they went on a trip to Europe and to Brazil with their 10-month-old son. And in the midst of all of this, Arturo Gatti suspiciously creates a will where he signs over all of his properties worth 3.4 million to his wife and to his son? Or did his wife forge his signatures? On July 10th, 2009, Arturo Gatti and Amanda Rodriguez was having a dinner at a restaurant with their 10-month-old son when the fight broke out between the two. Onlookers say Arturo Gatti pushed Rodriguez to the ground, took their son, and headed back to the apartment that they were renting. Arturo later came back to get Rodriguez when a fight broke out with onlookers there on the scene. He then got in a brawl with four different guys and upon Arturo Gatti 
and Amanda Rodriguez leaving back to the apartment that they were renting. Things cooled down a bit, but Amanda went on to tell Arturo Gatti that it was over. Amanda then said, she came downstairs to check on Arturo Gatti and he was laying sleep on the floor. She went back upstairs with her son and after two hours, she came back down to check on Arturo and she said he was stiff and cold. The first statements of the Brazilian police were that they thought foul play was involved and that Amanda Rodriguez had murdered her husband. Weeks later, Amanda Rodriguez was released from jail by the Brazilian authorities, stating that this was in fact a suicide and that Arturo Gatti had strangled himself with the purse strap of his wife's purse and this is how he was deceased. Although the Canadian authorities did not buy this for one second and then they went on to do their own 11 month investigation in which the findings were that this was in fact a homicide and not a suicide. And they also believed that Amanda Rodriguez had help. Upon hearing this, the Brazilian authorities stuck to their guns saying this was a suicide and that there were no one else there in that apartment because there was no forced entry of any kind. But one would beg to differ in the event that Amanda had hired someone to murder her husband, she could have simply went upstairs to open the door for the suspect. And one of the most sinister parts of this story is the way Amanda reacts when she gets released from jail, smiling and grinning. When you look at her body language and in interviews that she's done, it does not seem like she had much remorse at all. This is a dead giveaway for somebody that may have hired or committed a murder on their husband. Anything to do with the death of your husband? No, I would never do anything to harm my husband. Did you hire anyone to kill your husband? Of course not. Vernon Force, Hector Camacho, and Arturo Gatti, though they all met a tragic end to life, their legacy will be forever etched into the fabric of boxing.